Hello, YouTube! Now, last time we took a look at Sega's console history, and today we'll be looking at Nintendo's. Now, in 1983, Nintendo released the Famicom over in Japan. This would later become the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1985 here in North America. While supporting a different look than the Famicom with its toaster-like look, the Famicom and, S and Nintendo Entertainment System would actually feature two different cartridges and not be playable between the two systems. The Nintendo Entertainment System slash Famicom would go on to sell 61 point eighty or ninety one million units worldwide and its highest selling game even though bundled with the console would be Super Mario Brothers at forty point twenty three million units worldwide and the highest selling con game for the console without being bundled would be Super Mario Brothers 3 at eighteen million units the console's original launch price was $199.99 or you could get the raw bundle which included the robot operating buddy with gyromite a zapper and duck hunt for $249.99 the console would run from 1983 to 2003 and of course in North America that would be 1985 to 2003 the next console would be a handheld, developed by Gunpei Yokoi, creator of the Metroid series and the Virtual Boy. The Game Boy, combined with the Game Boy Pocket, Game Boy Light, and Game Boy Color, would go on to sell 118.69 or 69 million units worldwide, and its highest selling game for the Game Boy alone would be... Pokemon Green, Blue, and Red. Now, of course, Green only being available in Japan, and Blue only being only available in North America and Europe. The console would go from 1989 to 2003 at a starting price point of $189.95. In 1990... Nintendo would release its second home console, the Super Famicom, in Japan, and in 1991, the Super Nintendo would, would make its way to North American shores. The console would go on to sell 49.1 million units worldwide, and its highest selling game would be Super Mario World at 20.60 million units worldwide, and that would be a game bundled with the console. Its highest selling game that was not bundled with the console would be Super Mario Kart at 8 million units worldwide. And the console would be running from 1990 to, er, to 2003 and have a starting price point of $199.99. In, er, in, in 1996, my apologies... The Nintendo 64, Nintendo's first 64-bit console, as they never had a 32-bit console, would go on to sell 32.9 million units worldwide and its highest-selling game, Super Mario 64, at 11.62 million units worldwide. And its starting price point, $199.99. It would run from... 1996 to 2001. Yes, that's right. The Super Nintendo and Nintendo Entertainment System were continued longer than the Nintendo 64 was, given that they dis discontinued in 2003 and the Nintendo 64 discontinuing in 2001. Now, also in 1996, we would get the second version of the Game Boy being the Game Boy Pocket. The Game Boy Pocket would also be discontinued in 2003, and it would just be a much smaller version of the Game Boy and take less batteries, only needing two double A's instead of six. The Game Boy Light, which was exclusive to Japan, would be released in 1998 and be discontinued in 1993, 
and originally cost 6,800 yen in its initial launch. Also in 1998, we would get the Game Boy Color, which would go on from 1998 to 2008, and its highest selling game would be Pokemon Silver and Gold, selling more than two or uh, 23.1 million units worldwide. The next console to be released by Nintendo would be another handheld known as the Game Boy Advance. The Game Boy Advance would go on to sell 81.51 million units worldwide, and its highest selling game, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, and would go on from 2001 to 2008 and would have a starting price point of $149.99. The GameCube would release that same year for a price of $199.99 and would sell 21.74 million units worldwide and its highest selling game, Super Smash Bros. Melee, at a, price, at a unit sale of $7 million.09. Now, the console would be discontinued in 2007. And later on in 2003, we would get the Game Boy Advance SP, which would go on to sell 43.54 million units worldwide and would have a starting price point of two of $99 and would be discontinued in 2008. And of course, in 2004, we would get the DS and its many iterations between 2004 to 2010. The DS, with all of its iterations, would sell 151 million, uh, 0.52 million units worldwide, and its highest selling game, New Super Mario Bros. DS, at 28 point three million units worldwide and it would have a starting price point of a hundred and fifty dollars now in 2005 however Nintendo was not quite done with the Game Boy as it would release the Game Boy Micro unfortunately the Game Boy Micro was a flop as it would only sell 2.42 million units worldwide and it would be from 2005 to 2008 and it cost $99. Of course, at one point, stores were selling it for about 30 just trying to get it out of stock. I remember those days clearly, and I was quite amazed. Many of my friends have picked them up. I did not, unfortunately, but the system looked quite amazing for its size and being able to handle Game Boy Advance games. Now, in 2006, Nintendo would release another home console known as the Wii. The Wii would be Nintendo's most successful home console to date, selling more than 95.8 million units worldwide and would also be the first Nintendo console to be released in North America before the Japanese release date. So, the Wii Sports title would be its highest selling game despite being bundled with the console at 78.98 million units worldwide, but its highest selling game that was never bundled with the console would be Wii Play at 28.65 million units worldwide. Of course, we all know why that would be, because it, was in, it included an, an extra controller for the console. And it was much cheaper than just going to buy the controller by itself. The Wii is currently still in production and had an original launch price of $249.99. Nintendo's most recent console to be released would be the Nintendo 3DS, which launched in 2011 at a price point of $249.99 and had lackluster success until Nintendo dropped the price. However, the DS has now gone on to sell 17.5 million units worldwide, and its highest selling game to date would be the Super Mario 
3D land at 6.1 million units worldwide. With the Wii U looming this holiday season, it'll be interesting to see what Nintendo can pull off with the system. But until then, we'll just have to wait and see, as no price point has been made for the Nintendo Wii U, and hopefully it is successful. I hope you have enjoyed this brief history lesson on Nintendo's consoles, and I will see you all next time here on YouTube.